I'm getting ready to grow pounds of microgreens every week with really? LED lights in my basement. Uh-huh. I'm planning to grow cruciferous kale and broccoli. Wow. Can they be substituted for um, the, the microgreens? Can the kale and broccoli, can they be substituted for cruciferous greens? It's not the right way to look at it. Um, Yes, let me say first of all, microgreens are super healthy and super great to add to the diet, and I go and I use them and um, grow them too. And, um, but they don't give you enough substance, volume, teeth action, um, space. You need more food than that. You want like the broccoli and the artichoke takes up space in your stomach and gives you more fiber. You're gonna get the nutrients, but you also need that like idea of something to chew and to have more food volume. You still want to eat more food that you have to chew and eat and not just have the little tiny bit of microgreens. And it's, and it's too low in calories, too. So a person just living on sprouts and microgreen, good food for, you know, almost like a, like a fast. But it, there's, a, there's an issue here, and that is that you want the person to sustain the benefit, to sustain this way of living and adopt an approach that they can stick with for the rest of their life. And if we start to feed them a diet, if they go away to a health retreat, and, or they start eating just sprouts and microgreens, which are really super healthy for you, there's no way they're going to be able to sustain that. And that there's no benefit to doing something temporarily because you don't get long-term benefits from something that you do for a short period of time. So the question is, so, so it's a great addition to the overall diet, but we still want to go after variety, have substance, use our teeth, chew, have occupy space in our stomach, have something that can be sustainable. But I'm really excited you're growing microgreens. Thank you. Still want to eat broccoli, though. <laughs>